do exercise 4.7. This will take us to learning objective number 7. It's a short question. Let's see what we got here. Mohan Corporation is a distributor of a sun umbrella used at resort hotels. Data concerning the next month's budget appears below. And we have some information there. Required compute the company's margin of safety. Well, what is the margin of safety? We know the margin of safety is sales equals sales minus our break-even point. So we need two things. We need the level of sales and we need our break-even point. So sales, what do we know about sales? Well, it's our selling price times our quantity. <clears throat> Let's see what we have. Selling price is $25 per unit. Variable expense, fixed expense, and unit sales. There we go at the bottom, 1,000 units. So 25 times 1,000 equals $25,000. So we've got half of what we need. Now we need the break-even point, right? Well, what do we know about the break-even? Well, we need it in sales. We need it in dollars. So it's going to be our fixed costs over our contribution margin ratio. Well, do we have any of this information? Fixed expense is 8500 so we have that. Do we have our contribution margin ratio? No, we don't, so we have to calculate it. Well, we calculate it by the selling price, which is $25, so that's 100%, minus our variable cost per unit, which we're told is $15 per unit. There's 15, which is 60%. That leaves us with 10 or 40%. So now we have our contribution margin ratio. So we can return back to this one equals 8,500 divided by 0.4. And of course, this is just calculator work, 250. So our margin of sales is sales minus our break-even point. We're in a position to actually solve that now. So therefore, margin of safety equals sales, $25,000 minus our break-even point of 21,000 250 will give us $3,750. There we go. Let's look at our next one, number two. Compute the company's margin of safety as a percentage of sales. So we're looking for the margin of safety percent, which we know is margin of safety divided by sales. Well, we've already calculated the margin of safety, 3750 and in calculating margin of safety, we've calculated sales at $25,000, which will give us 15%. There's 4.7. Exercise 4.8 is learning objective 8. What have we got? Compute and use the degree of operating leverage. And Tergo company installs home theater systems. The company's most recent monthly contribution format income statement appears below, and there it is. If you're looking at the page, of course, there it is. If you're just looking at the screen with no book, well, there it is not. Required, compute the degree, the company's, sorry, compute the company's degree of operating leverage. Well, let's uh, first of all replicate what we have in the, uh, in the book so that, uh, that we're on the same page. There's our amount. There's our percent. So let's begin with sales, and we have 120,000, representing 100%, minus our variable costs of 84,000, which is 70%. That should be a percent there. Gives us a contribution margin of 36,000, or 30%. This is our contribution margin ratio minus our fixed costs, we're told, are 24000 And that will give us an operating profit or an operating income. They're both the same thing of $12,000. So let's uh, look at what's required here. Number one, compute the company's degree of operating leverage. So we know the degree of operating leverage Leverage is equal to our contribution margin divided by our operating income. And you'll recall that the degree of operating leverage is sales 
level specific. What that means, just to review, is that if sales were anything different than 120,000, we would get a different number for operating leverage. So the operating leverage is for a point of sales. What we calculate here will be the operating leverage assuming we're at $120,000 in sales. So it will tell us what will happen as we change from this point forward. But let's say it's seven and we ask what happens if sales increase by 10%. Well, we can't then say, well, what if it increases another 10%? If it increases 10%, we can calculate that but then we have to calculate a new degree of operating leverage for the higher level of sales before we can answer another question about where we move from there. So as long as you remember, it is sales level specific. So let's get back to our problem. Our contribution margin, well, there it is, 36,000. And our operating income, there it is down there, 12,000. 36 divided by 12 is three. So our degree of operating leverage is three. Using the degree of operating leverage, estimate the impact on operating income of a 10% increase in sales. So number two says we have an increase in sales of 10%. Therefore, we'll have an increase in operating income of, remember, we take our increase in sales multiplied by our degree of leverage, and that will be an increase of 30%. Number three says verify your estimate from two above by constructing a new contribution format income statement for the company assuming a 10% increase in sales. So let's do that. Our sales will increase by 10%. So if we had 120, 10% is 12,000. So we'll now have 132,000. That will represent 100%. Less our variable costs. Well, there, we don't know exactly what to do with our variable cost, it's not clear, but we do know that our variable expense ratio is 70%. So we can assume that this will stay at 70%. 70% 70 of 132 gives us 92.4. And that will give us a contribution margin. This is just subtraction at this point, 39.6, and we know that this is 30%. So this here stays constant with this over here. So we can use some of these numbers to fill in some of the other numbers that we may not be sure of. Less our fixed costs, they'll stay the same, 24,000. And that will give us an income of 15,600. So we wanna know, is that 30% higher than 12,000? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the difference here. We'll take our 15,000 600 minus our original amount of 12,000. That's the difference. Divided by the 12,000 to get a percent equals 3,600 divided by 12K will give us 30%. You can check that on your calculator to see that that's in fact correct. So this shortcut way, sometimes a shortcut, doesn't give us a sense of security. We look at the shortcut and we say, yeah, but is, is it real? Does, did it really work? And once we verify that, yes, it does, we become much more comfortable with using shortcuts like this.